Hi, this is Steve with Homestrung Jewelry. And this is Debbie with Homestrung Jewelry. And today we have kind of a quick and easy project. Debbie's going to model it. Uh, this uses materials from the box. It was kind of interesting. As we went through the uh, the pictures at the end of our unboxing last time, we just I was noticing that we had a bracelet here that I just hadn't paid much attention to. This is one that Debbie came up with. Uh, I've never done it, and so today I'm going to do it for the first time with Debbie's instructions. Okay, materials that you're going to need in order to make this bracelet is very simple, and everything is in, in this is, is in the September Gemstone Orphanage box. And of course, you can make substitutions, you know, for for anything here. In fact, we've got a couple of ideas of other things that we can use. And so you're going to need four of these cord ends. Of course, you're going to need cord to go with that. You're going to need 10 inches of this. What is this? One and a half, two millimeter. You'll need about Black 10 cord. inches to make a 7 inch bracelet, so adjust it a little bit. If you need to make a larger one, you might want to go to 12. And this was the 1.5, 2 millimeter? That's a 2 millimeter. 2 millimeter. Then the 18 gauge black wire that was in the kit. Uh, we have this little magnetic clasp, which was in the kit. There's a couple of the little bicone crystals. What are these? 3 millimeters? 4. Four millimeters boy they look smaller and then a couple of I'm gonna guess five millimeter jump, jump rings. rings and then you've got these little cat uh, you've got three of these beads. crystal cats in your box and these are two-sided uh, there's a metal side and then there's the crystal side and so you're gonna to want to line these up let's talk about tools you're gonna to need round nose pliers you're gonna need chain nose pliers I think you almost always have to have that and then a set of cutters. These are flush cutters. You're probably going to need a ruler of some sort. I just have one that was laying around here, a little shorty one, which we're going to use in order to measure the wire and measure the cord. And then you're probably going to need some sort of a glue, uh, super glue, an acrylic uh, glue, an acrylic super glue in order to put the leather into the cord ends. So anything else, Debbie, you can think of? I'd probably have a second pair of pliers to help me open and close the jump rings as well. So what do we start with, Debbie? I'd start by cutting your uh, wire and your leather cord. At the same time. You'll No. You, I like to have uh, long enough ends to make my wrap loops. Sure. So I would probably cut maybe four inches of this. Okay. What if I just use the whole thing and just cut it, but I'll, we'll humor you and we'll cut four inches of the wire. And we have 10 inches of cord here, and so we just need two five-inch pieces to fit you. Right, so you're just going to cut that in half. And I'm just going to put the two ends together and bring it up and cut it exactly in the middle. And so there's our leather cords. And so there's nothing else to do. Well, you gotta you start, making start the project. This is gonna be fast, fast and easy. Okay. You're gonna start by making a wrap loop on one end of your wire. It needs to be a fairly large loop. So move it down the jaws how, a ways. How large? It's gotta take your leather cord through as a double to make a lanyard or a cat eye. So how big do you think? I mean, looking here, at that. Well, your, your brown focus. nose pliers are different from mine. I went clear to the bottom of mine, but yours are... And we applaud their differences. <laughs> mine are a lot smaller than yours, so I went okay. clear to the bottom. These are a, these are a large Weber, so we're going to go about halfway down on this one, but your pliers may vary. So we're just going to make a wrapped loop here. And bring that loop in there. Take it off. We got that nice lollipop look. Is that loop going to be big enough, Debbie? Yeah, I think that's going to be about right. Okay, and I'm going to hold this loop. And I usually just use my fingers to wrap, but I haven't left myself a lot of room here. How many wraps, Debbie? 
I don't do a lot because I didn't want there to be a lot of space between the loop and the, the cat. So I probably did about one and a half to two loops is all. So, and this is 18 gauge wire. So this is not going to be an easy wrap. It's almost easier with my fingers, I guess. Because I just come in with my fingers and just hold it and push it around. Manhandle it. If Debbie was doing it, she'd be woman handling it. And that's a little tight. Bring the pliers in just to finish that up so I have two full, or pretty close to two full wraps. And then just trim that. And yeah, trim your tail, trim and tack. And Debbie, with Debbie here, I don't pay attention to me being on camera because she's supposed to do that. So if I'm not on camera, it's her fault. Yeah, I was watching him, not the camera. <laughs> okay, there's our first loop. All right, so now you're that going looks, to string the beads. I was going to look and see. That's about five millimeters, about three sixteenth. Whoops, bring it up here. About three sixteenth of an inch by five millimeters on the inside. So what's next? Okay, we're gonna string your beads on. So start I with the cat. Make sure the cats are gonna be facing the same way. Okay, so I'm gonna do the crystal side out. And then by cone. Oops. Good thing you were here. I've had three cats and a by cone. Which sounds like a really and bad movie. And then another cat. second bicone. Yeah, this is like a two minute project unless I'm doing it. And it's going to take like 30 minutes. And the third cat head. Okay, now you just want to make a wrap loop, an identical wrap loop on the other end of that piece of wire. You need to bring them down tight. I yes, a little, bring them down. I had a little place where it was sticking. Tight, so. Okay, so got a little bit of a gap in here right here. Yeah, I got a sticky place on the I got a bend in the wire or something. I guess you could have straightened your wire a little bit. Well I didn't want to I'm I'm using an old a scrap piece of wire from an <laughs> earlier project and I guess I shouldn't have done that. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna grab this so I've got enough room for a couple of wraps. And you could down the jaws a tiny bit more, you're too close. Your little tiny bit more. But that's about where you were when you made the other loop. I think that's too much. No. Well, that was the, for the loop. I'm talking about the space here. Oh, for the space. Oh. Yeah, that's no, too I'm much space. About for the loop. I know. Well, we're just making for the wraps here first. You adjust the size of the wrap, or the number of wraps, by moving this back and forth, and then we'll adjust for the loops because it isn't always the same. So we'll just bend that over. Then I'll bring it up to where Debbie wants me to. Looks about right. And we'll make a make a wrapped loop here. And I got a little more wire this time, so it'll be easier. Ow. And she's trying to push me back onto camera. And then Wrap it just a couple times so it matches the other end. And then make sure that they are both. Oh my heavens, they don't the line up. <laughs> make sure they're facing the same way. Let's trim this off. As Shanda would say, trim and tuck. I always tuck and trim. That's probably why mine don't look right. And you can see the two wires don't line up. And so we will take them and bend them so they match. Okay, the okay. hard part's done. The hard part's done. You don't know me. <laughs> it's all the hard part. Okay, so we've got the center piece. 
What's next? We're going to attach the leather cord into each of those loops. So one piece of leather cord folded in half. And then stick the fold, the half, up through that. Can I pull one. it? Can I pull it through? Yes, you could go that way too. Whichever's easier. You can pull the two ends through, or if you're good at pinching your cord, you can pinch and, and pull, put the half up. And then feed them back through the leather cord loop and pull them very, very tight. You want to eliminate all the space you possibly can. Okay. In this knot. But we're going to do it with, uh, so the loop comes, the loop is going to come over the top of the wire, yes, right? Yes, the loop comes over the top of the wire, and then you just pull those two ends nice and tight. Trying to keep them the same length, or probably it would have been a good you idea. You could use those nylon jaw pliers and pull them, and it wouldn't hurt the leather cord. Yeah, we could try that. Of course, these are kind of slippery. Let's pull it tight here. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yes, now it will fit somebody with an 8-inch wrist. <laughs> no. Okay, so you can, okay. you can see the, the loop there going over the top. So we'll do the same thing with the other side. Exactly. Get the two ends together. Run them through the wire loop and then back through the leather loop. Let's get these two together. Except I think I did it backwards. I was going to say, you can do these backwards of each other. You don't want to. So if you find out when you're pulling them that your leather loop is laying on the other side of the bracelet, pull it out and insert it through the other direction. Okay, so I'm pulling it tight, but I'm going to pull that loop out first. Keep the two ends together, and that is a lot easier. I can do that with my hands. Yeah, I think I, I can't remember if I use pliers or, or not, but... Uh... Yeah, you're not supposed to question anything. Everyone thinks you're the expert, Debbie, so just... Just shut up and say, yeah! <laughs> well, I made it weeks ago, and then I've made a lot of other things, so I don't always remember. Yes. Plus, I'm getting old. No. I quit that years ago. All right, so we've got the two loops. With the loops sitting there on top, it kind of hides the wire loops. And so now I'm assuming what we're going to do is put the cord ends on. Right. You want to make sure your leather cord ends are exactly even. You can trim them a little bit. You also may want to fold the bracelet around your wrist, adding enough for what the clasp and cord ends will add to it. And this is how you would shorten it if it's going to be too long. The one I made, the model I made before, is just a little bit longer than I like my bracelets. Okay. So I'm hoping this one comes in just a little bit shorter. Well, I'm going to trim up the ends a tiny bit, and I'm going to use my flush cutters to do that. I've got scissors here, but I think the flush cutters do a better job with the leather. So I'll just trim those up. And then we're going to put, grab the glue, and we're going to put the cord ends on each one. So we'll fasten the glue on those and we'll come back as soon as they're all glued on. All right, so we've got all four cord ends glued on. We've given them a couple of minutes to dry and so I'm assuming we're going to just jump ring on the clasp. Yep, you're going to open a jump ring, add both the cord ends of one side and one half of your magnetic clasp. Do the same on the other side. Yeah, I'm going to move the open the clasp and move the ends out a little bit. And I did go get, uh, I prefer to use a couple of flat nose pliers for jump rings. I can certainly use the, the chain nose if I need to. And we will open this up, push it in a little bit so that the two ends come together. There we go. We'll start over here. Put 
the two ends in. I'm going to move this back rather than have Debbie slapping me around. I'm not slapping, but I'm poking and pushing. Yeah, I'm getting bruises. I'm feeling abused. Okay. So we've got that on the clasp. Of course, now that I've pulled the camera back, I can stay right here in the center. No problems. Of course, magnetic clasps are always a joy to work with because they stick to all your tools. And then the black, you can't see anything. All right, we're switching over to the chain nose. Just to give me a little more space. Okay, bring those together. Check the junk, bring the top, the sides. There's the first one. Now I'm assuming we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Exactly. And I like to put the magnetic class don't always line up real well, so I prefer to set it on there. And then we'll open up this second jump ring. These are a cut ring, so we need to close up that gap. There we go. Line it up. Push it through the holes. Okay, apparently there is no amount of space. And then pull the other. Whoa! Magnetic fields are not aligning. And jump rings are my thing. There we go. Check it from the top. Make sure it's all lined up. And we are done. That is a completed bracelet. Let's get all the get all the cats lined up. You can have your colorful side or you can flip it over and do the shiny side. One of the uh, subscribers, designers that bought one of these boxes did a necklace that uses these three cats in a similar manner. That's yeah, on the Facebook and, page. Yeah, she posted it on the Facebook page and I was telling her that we were doing a, a bracelet tutorial and I felt this bracelet would match her necklace. So here it is. Okay, so there we are. It's all complete. Didn't take a huge amount of time and used materials in the box. Of course, I could see using uh, eight millimeter rounds, uh, any other shape bead. The firecracker box had those stars, which would be great on be this. Good. The uh, adventuring hearts might work pretty good in this. Yep, I thought about doing that. So anyway, here's a project finish in just a minute. If you enjoyed this project and you'd like to see more quick and simple projects, let us know in the comments down below. Be sure and click the like button and to be notified of any future videos we come out with. Hit the subscribe and ring the bell. And that's it for today. All right. This is Debbie saying bye-bye. Oh, push me out of the way. Bye-bye. <laughs>